This is The CW Spiral, a podcast run by three survivors of the CW's calling in 2022. We're your hosts, Sabrina Reed, Michael Patterson, and Reed Gowden, bringing you history about the network and the WB, the latest news and in-depth sportable discussions of the best and messiest shows to ever grace the small screen. Okay, so we're coming to the end of 2023, which means that we need to get things off of our chests. And you have unfinished business. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know the healing. The healing needs to com- to be completed. And <laughs> a, a listener that brought this up for us was Peach Panda nine six nine three, uh, in this wonderful dissection of the end of Nancy Drew that had us being like, yes, keep going, <laughs> keep going, Ex- explain, let the people know because it's really how we felt, and so now we feel like, you know, it's our turn. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's let's get into it. The comment was also really, I felt funny and well written, <laughs> so I want to applaud Peach Panda, yeah, for the joy that the comment brought. <laughs> <laughs> and getting into the nitty gritty, which is, if you've watched our Nancy Drew reviews, you know we had a lot of mixed feelings, not just about the finale, but se- season four in general. And um, we're, we're uh, quite a few months removed from it now, and I feel like that hasn't fully left our souls yet um but we're coming up to the end of the year and you know we just want to get it off our chest one more time um because what we're about to say comes from a place of how much we enjoyed nancy drew and how much we loved nancy drew and kind of how much the finale missed the mark for us and i don't know if i can word it better than that because it genuinely felt like all this show had all the makings of ending on a great note and the final season just didn't come together like they hoped it would Mm-mm. I believe I said in our review of the finale that they docked the boat and that's all they had to do. Mm-hmm. And they did that. And that was like the end of, well, not the end of my thoughts. Cause we, I think that was a little long. <laughs> it was like, it just felt like after going through our journey with Nancy Drew, that it wasn't the ending that we had wanted, uh, not just because of the finale, but because of the lead up to the finale. Uh, and yes, we do understand that, uh, some things were out of control, namely the show being canceled. Uh, and when they were told that the show was 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 canceled, but in regards to storytelling, the end of Nancy Drew just doesn't feel like it serves our main character, our titular character, or really the other characters as well. It's it's just, and not even because it it ties it up in a, a neat bow, basically, but because it's like in some ways trauma the episode. Mm-hmm. that's a great way of putting it because I feel like there was so much trauma leading up to the final episode of Nancy because was it the penultimate episode we obviously had feelings about the episodes before that we had feelings about a lot of storylines were picked up and put down and yet all of them had one underlining point trauma and I'm not sure we've been on pod and criticized the flash of season finale for just feeling like the end of any old storyline but at the very least there was a serviceable tie-up for a lot of the characters involved i feel like heading towards the nancy drew season finale we saw our characters get more and more miserable more and more heartbroken and that made the finale episode have such a tall task to try to come together as both a season and a series finale and i feel like it kind of nailed the season finale aspect but missed the mark on all of the series finale aspects because it just did too much to do. We didn't need to do this much in 13 episodes, specifically the back five. And it just didn't come together like I think the writers wanted it to. I will say in defense of the show, although it's an odd defense to make, is that the entire series was rooted in trauma. Mm -hmm. Mm. Every story, pretty much. Um, And that's not necessarily a bad thing because at least in the beginning it was doing it well um but yeah it in the final season creating new traumas was jarring well, and it's not that we needed the characters to be blissful happy free of all the weight but it's like the episode the penultimate episode created a whole new trauma well there's that but also like regarding Alice, but as if we're just thinking about Nancy, we had done a finale in a previous season where she had relinquished the weight of uh, her family name and what had happened to her biological mother and the grief over her adoptive mother. We and yet 
we chain her to a new source of trauma that has nothing to do with her. Like that's the overarching thing in the season four finale that she is going to go basically do penance for something that an ancestor she didn't even know about did. Uh, and instead of reconciling with the trauma that she actually created for a person that she's deeply in love with, which was Ace, and any penance towards Alice and her family, that wasn't a thing. Like mm-hmm. Ace did that. Ace went to the funeral. He's uh, He was contending with his feelings on what happened and the choices that Nancy had made. But Nancy didn't quite you know, navigate that with Alice. She just wanted Ace to stop being mad at her. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then the thing that she actually is considering is something she hadn't known about previously, which is that like her soul belongs to a man who did wretched things to other people. And it's just like, why is that her season ending and I and a series ending and I know they were go they thought they might get a season five. So perhaps the story would have changed. But in the era that the CW was in is just an odd choice for a season four, uh, considering the guarantee of having another season was not there, not in that climate at the Mm -hmm. CW. No, when the Alice storyline first uh, came onto our screens, I know the three of us had a conversation about the problematic issues of that. And then we talked about that in the pod as well. But I feel like that storyline really became possibly the worst thing Nancy Drew has ever done. And of course, we we just mentioned the, the issues with that storyline and the connotations of it. But it also spiraled and spiraled and spiraled into how Nancy suddenly had all this trauma based off it because her ancestor did something horrible years ago and she has the same soul as that person. And then there's reincarnation and all of the like. And it's like, where did this come from? You watched the third last episode of Nancy Drew and then you watched the last episode of Nancy Drew and it's like two different series as much less seasons. And it's like, did I miss something? And one episode is there's no way how do they pack that much information into one episode and you're right sabrina it almost wasn't her trauma but it was turned into her trauma and it was a new storyline that didn't relate to the previous trauma and if you watch the cw spiral last week's episode was all about flashbacks and we are literally having an issue with flashbacks on nancy because this is a show that didn't necessarily do them all that often and suddenly we're flashing back to the 1800s so that nancy can see that her soul was recently possessed by a horrible person so that her soul is, is the reincarnation here nancy was once a hideous man who killed someone generations ago and that so that puts more trauma and more guilt on a person who has spent her whole four season journey suffering from trauma and guilt that was actually far more personal to her than this one i don't know why nancy i if I was Nancy, I would literally have been like, now why am I in it? Because this storyline leading up to this didn't have that much to do with her. And suddenly they found in a unique way to reel her into the story, make her the villain off it, make her suffer from such guilt. She obviously did a horrible thing, but the actual important part of that guilt, which would have been about Alice, was kind of dropped so that we could turn it into Nancy feeling sad about her history and how her history once again is turned against her and how she's once again a horrible person within. And I'm like, we went through all this with the Hudson. She got over that. We went through all this, obviously, un- understandably with her mother's death. She let all that go in season two. And it's like, the one thing, and now you know where the sentence is going, the one thing that let the show down was his timeline. Because the character arc of Nancy Drew right up until the penultimate episode was a heck of a character arc. But when you think about the fact that all of that went down in one, se- one year, it completely falls apart. And I'm like, why, what was the need to do that? What was the need to get Nancy over this years of trauma in one year? Only to pile a heck of a lot more on in the final two episodes. We'll never get over the timeline. Never. Never. Genuinely. It's a lot yeah. to go through in a year. Like I'm surprised she's not sitting on somebody's couch divulging in as best she can because there's just a lot of talk therapy would need it. There's mm-hmm. just so much that hits her as a character over and over and over again that is out of her control or sometimes is in her control. Like maybe she didn't make a good decision or she's because of uh, traumatic instances in her life, she didn't respond well to a situation like a personal dynamic which again this is why i think that seasons one through two in 
three is when we start kind of really falling off the cliff there um as far as like the overall arc for her for her but the acknowledgement that trauma is not an excuse for the way that you treat people it's a reason the the like the 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 need to delve through that and navigate it and the time it takes and the the honesty um, that you need to be able to work through in yourself and with other people. That is fantastic storytelling as a show and for the character. And I feel like by the time we got to season four, we were losing a lot of that. Like I loved seeing Nancy start off um, in season one being guarded but also being a very emotional person, but not knowing how to express how she's feeling because she doesn't want to contend with it because if she has to stop, then she has to feel it. And I thought that was amazing to see her journey, you know, start to open up, to accept people in, to acknowledge when she's wrong, to acknowledge she's hurting, to acknowledge other people's hurts in the way that she has, has hurt people. And then season four, she's we're having fun episodes and then but the narrative is a little the narrative is a lot actually nancy is not really running her investigation um business not in any actuality in the way that you'd want for her character the majority of her plot is being upset that ace won't be with her Mm-hmm. like that's the, the that's nancy's plot for a lot of the season and there's an argument that could be made that well she had went through trauma so now she's trying to reach for love and like yeah but there's still trauma in that love because now the it's oh the curse the curse yeah. they, they, they could die if they uh they accept this love for one another they act on this love for one another which by the way um that curse didn't quite make sense to me uh, the, the more they think about it only because Really, what Temperance says is he could die at any time. That's true in life, regardless. He could literally, Ace could walk out the door. <laughs> and, and she's like, it could be five years. It could be like five minutes. Like That's true to life, regardless. It's just, you're not bearing a curse. It's just what life is. Yeah, mm-hmm. but don't they explain the way the curse, or he, doesn't he say like, oh, it's something about souls. This is, they use the reincarnation to explain Occurs. Yeah, at the end, but in the beginning of the season, it literally just feels like they can't, they're show, they can't act on their love because he could die. But there's no actual timeline for the death. Like it's it just he could die in five minutes. He could die in ten years. She would just mm-hmm. never know. And I was like, Nancy, you'd never know. I feel like we need to wrap up the curse, regardless of if we had another season, regardless if we knew we had a full season to tell that story. I think before we got to that trilogy of standalones which were like i think that was our last hurrah bit of, really yeah yeah it was, yeah um I, I feel like it could have been wrapped up and then they st- i don't like pitching alt storylines even though i do it <laughs> <laughs> but like break the curse and they and someone still doesn't want to be together you know i feel like that's a i don't know i feel like that's a bigger heartbreak than the curse still happening and i don't know there's no way to to it, hindsight is 2020 20, but there's no way to say you should have done this because it's i mean it's not my show but i think the curse was mismanaged and that's mm-hmm. i don't know if that's the biggest issue with the structure of the final season but it's definitely one of the you know cracks in the foundation of it yeah, no, you bring up an interesting point. What if the curse got broken halfway through the season? Like, Ace was in a relationship with someone else or Nancy was in a relationship with someone else and then they are like, no, well, I'm happy now. And then the rest of the season, they had to wrestle with their feelings for each other and eventually got together. I think that would have been a slightly more interesting dynamic because there would have been less trauma involved in that. They would have found their way back to each other out of love rather than have been forced together because of trauma. Um and I just feel like it would have been a bit predictable, but like we were running out of time, folks. I think there were other things we could have done rather than what we did do, because at the end, I feel like the only the only end game we had by the time the season came to an end was that Nancy and Ace got together and we got that. And I feel like that was the only remotely satisfying thing about the finale, because so much else happened in that finale that felt series finale-esque. But again, when you look back at the fact that this story we watched was only a year of their lives it suddenly doesn't feel that satisfying i would have much rather than adventures continue off screen kind of ending for them because 
it uprooted everything as though we've been watching these people for nine years. We've been watching them for one year. Um, so to think that the iconic Nancy Drew era of all of their lives just lasted for a single year was kind of really kind of a letdown. It just, I, I, I say this a lot. The first season of Nancy Drew was one of the best first seasons of television I've ever seen. The second season was a solid follow up. But then you remember that all the character work took place and that Nancy finally let go of a lot of her trauma in the past. And suddenly we were at the start of season three and that at the start of season three, she was feeling some way about Nick and George getting uh, engaged and married. She was feeling a little way about that. And then all of season three took place in 14 days. And suddenly by the end of season three, she was head over heels with, with S. Um, Nick and George couldn't have been further from her mind. And it just feels like, have we done too much? Have we lost the timeline here? Could there have been another way of doing this? So I don't know. I don't mean to ramble on about the timeline, but I just feel like there was a lot they had right, but some some of the execution undercut a lot of what could have been. Some of the writing uh, played to the timeline of the series length for the fans. Mm -hmm. I think that's why that ending scene worked for some people more than others of them. Uh, being very emotional saying goodbye to the claw and to each other because it's like when you think about it it's been a year they've been through a lot but like it's a big moment so that was definitely for the fans and the cast and crew like it's a big thing saying goodbye to your favorite show it's a big thing saying goodbye to co-workers that you've worked with but like when you think about the characters going their separate ways it's like would it be that big of a deal after a year regardless of what you went through, there's no answer technically, but mm -hmm. it's a question to, if you want to poke a hole in that scene, which Peach Panda did, and I appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> it is so like removing ourselves from how emotional it would be for those who worked on the show, the creative team and the uh, fans who've been watching since the beginning as a storytelling element, the characters are so attached to this restaurant and I get it, but in, um, and it's, and it's only really been a year, but like that, the being emotional about leaving the restaurant isn't the thing that I'm like, mm, about it's that like George sold her family's restaurant. Like the, she just got the restaurant earlier in, in, in the, um, in the show. And now she's selling it after a year, despite her family's history in it. Mm -hmm. Nick has had 3.5 businesses in a year. No, <laughs> like uh, Bess came into town desperately wanting to know about the Marvins. Magic entered the plot and suddenly she doesn't care. And um, we're now invested in being basically the the spiritual leader of Horseshoe Bay via uh, whatever magical source. I don't think they name what, what she does. But like, and I'm just like, but it's been a year. How, how are we trusting you? You just got here. I, like mm -hmm. I'm so sure, I'm sure members of the town don't even know who you are. It's been like that short of a time. Like Nick's already on the on the county council, and it's been a year. But, like it just when you when we stay in the three hundred and sixty five day calendar, my mind just goes boop because I can't help but think about all the things that have to happen, that all the things that have happened in the show, and the way that just does not work. <laughs> for mm -hmm. like like realism even i know it's a supernatural paranormal show but some things have to be realistic and that often has to be the timeline carson's grief arc that's the one i was going to bring up yeah it's just a hot mess when you think about the <laughs> year <laughs> um the teacup the, yeah yeah that I, that's that that's it and this is the reason i think season four made it worse because we actually acknowledge the fact that it had only been a year we acknowledge the fact <laughs> that when that was revealed i remember it was like the air being blown out of balloon <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, i remember i watched this and was like no i heard that wrong and then i got a message from one of you guys saying it's only been a year um and i was like oh my goodness because it was season three we started seeing the cracks in the time and i were like season three was only 14 days huh the gap between it and season two was only seven wait how long has it been and then they acted four. like that season opener that time jump they were actually like it had been four years and like yeah got it. It was last <laughs> <week>. it was, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and then 
season four acknowledged all of that. Season four acknowledged that it had only been a year since Nancy's mom died, which, by the way, was not the beginning of the show. We had a little bit of time between then. You know what I mean? The show didn't begin yeah. right then. There was some time before that. So that all of the show's events took place in less than a year. Um, we had this acknowledgement in season four after Carson started a relationship with Jean, after Jean questioned Carson as to whether he was over his wife's death. Why would that man be over his wife's death? What, you know what I mean? Some of the yeah. like potentially nuanced storylines they tried to deal with in season three ended up completely falling apart in season four by the revelation that it had only been a year. Um, so it's, since this man's, uh, this man's wife da- died, he has now started a new relationship. They're very serious about each other. Um, and now they're having a child together. And I mean, that arc, love that for him. He deserves that happiness. But when, when they address the fact that he may not be over his wife's death, and then you find out that it's only a year later, you're like, that he was well within his rights to feel that way. It's a big leap from that to that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We're trying to do two different things. But did we have together. discrepancies with the timeline way early on when I was trying to figure out she took a video on her iPad, Nancy, of like oh, what yeah. happened in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this happened this time. But they flashed. Did they? Uh, did they flash <laughs> season two. Is that the season two premiere that we, fla- we flashed I? back in? We were really trying to do some math with some listeners trying to explain it in the comments. I remember that much, but I don't remember the actual like logistics of what happened and why we were questioning it. It's something to do with like an iT- iPod video. iPod Fireworks. <laughs> I'm 8,000 years old. <laughs> there was a video she took from the claw and we thought it was 4th of July, but someone was like, it's not. And it like kind of re- cha- changed like the dynamics between the characters. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't know, but was I remember when- that. Yeah, it was when some of them first met each other. Was there someone who just started in the claw and there was some kind of interaction and they didn't all get on because it wasn't until the pilot that they actually formed this kind of dynamic. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. And the, we've had we had discrepancies and issues with it throughout maybe the second season. I think the first season was just a ball of wonder. Everything in the first season did was so deep and so well. Yeah. It was just so good. The novelty hadn't worn off. Yet. <laughs> really, it hadn't. Um, and season two, like I said, felt like a solid follow-up. It wasn't as strong as season one, but it still felt like the continuation of that story. The tone changed from season three. The timeline fastened up. Um, everything kind of started cracking. And then season four started better than season three was. But then just as we ch- chugged along, we find out more and more about the timeline, more and more about the trauma, and it just started falling apart. Um, I hate to make this comparison because... They're two different shows, but we've been kind of overexposed to series finales in the last two, year and a half. So it, it's going to happen, especially since it ended on the same night. Um, Riverdale Ooh. is a show that was far less consistent than Nancy Drew, far less consistent. Um, and when you think about it, it only had two, two to three real phenomenal seasons and we kind of struggled with the other ones. It's series finale was beautiful. We cared about those characters parting ways and not, they didn't all get on as well as the Drew crew. Cheryl had a very more hate than the love relationship with the likes of Betty, Archie and Jughead and Veronica. And yet we cared about their final few moments together. That hug in the diner at the end. Sorry, look away if you haven't seen the Riverdale series finale, please. Spoiler warning. Um, that hug in the diner at the end. Beautiful. And the reunion at the end. There were characters Riverdale didn't care about and thus we didn't really care about. And yet when they came together in the finale, tears were streaming, clap, claps were being had. I was like, get back together. We loved all of it. That was an expertly done season series finale. And yeah, they had 20 episodes to work with, but very little series finale stuff happened in those first 10 episodes. It was only as we moved into the second 10. But we were rotten in the 50s for a lot of that season. Yeah, we, we were. were. What are we going to do? We were. <laughs> and they figured out a way. And they had two timelines to deal with. And They did. They juggled it all. Whereas Nancy Drew had 13 episodes. And this is a show that knows how to tell linear storylines. Nancy Drew had 13 episodes and we could have just done a linear storyline. But just like with The Flash, we spent a lot of time struggling with certain things here and there. Um, And when you think about it, I never really thought about this until I seen it written down. All four of the Drew crew had different relationships. The only one that kind of carried over from the previous season was Bassanati. And it was never given the occur or attention that it needed. So... That was kind of a subplot of a relationship. Then we had Nancy with Tristan, which I can't really call it a subplot because it definitely uh, dealt with the soul leader and all of that, but it felt like an afterthought of a relationship. Ace and Alice was so much of an afterthought of a relationship, even though it got some exposure towards the end. And then you had George and that nice man whose name I can't remember. Also, the most afterthought of a relationship, just to give them all neat little endings. Um, 
And then yes, and Alice didn't get a neat little landing, and Nancy and Tristan never got a neat little landing. It was like right up until the series finale, it was definitely positioning Tristan as a possible alternative relationship for Nancy. So much so that their like parting moment in the series finale never felt worth it. I, there was just so much happening, and I feel like we only used the series finale to deal with it when we could have used maybe the last three or two episodes because every episode opened a new can of worms. And it wasn't on the, in the series finale. They were like trying to close it. They couldn't really do it. Um, the, the light, the, the, the energy, it kept all spewing out of it. Like the energy spewed out of Nancy's soul in that odd sequence. They, they just could not put a lid on everything in the series finale because they opened too many cans of worms. And I feel for them because they got so close. It's just the further season four went on. It kind of just went more and more off track. I love that lid metaphor. It's like they opened the cabinets and they were looking for the lids. And like, oh, we yeah. <laughs> Missing a couple lids. <laughs> Tupperware home. <laughs> but I think I, I think Peach Panda mentioned this in um their comment, but the I think there is an argument to be made that the show uh goes off the rails due to the inclusion of magic. Can I read the what they said? Oh yes, you you have the section. Yes. There's no point even talking about the plot in quotes because it doesn't matter one bit. Ever since magic was introduced to the show, they just exposition dump about mythical, mystical mumbo jumbo and then the day is saved by doing a ritual. That is I mean, a quote by Peach Panda. I mean, it's it's a quote, like it's a direct quote, but like I can't think of an argument for it. I can't think of an argument against it. Um, they're not wrong. No, and it's, I think this goes back to magic has rules. Always has to have rules. If you're going to include it into a show or whatever you're doing, you it has to have parameters. And it cannot be your do X machine where something goes wrong in the plot. That's just as a ritual. Uh, like there's where two people being kept apart. Oh, it's this curse, you know, and the reasons for why they can't break the curse is very convoluted and, uh, and just believe us for reasons and we'll figure it out towards the end of the season. Like you, you can do that, but what it does is it makes it feel like though the stakes are high, you'll be able to get out of this in like an episode, like whatever that needs to be broken to fix something can immediately be done in one episode. And we didn't actually have to focus that hard on it. And that's what happens in season four. Like the, you, you leave season, the season three finale going the curse, you get into the season four premiere and we're talking about the curse and we are for a few episodes. And then we kind of just drop it. Mm -hmm. as far as trying to figure out what to do about breaking it so that we can focus on other plots that we want to do. We can focus on other relationships and other dynamics. And it's like, what's the point? Because I feel like season four should have been Nancy Drew, the curse. But even when they're trying to break the curse, it was kind of about undoing it via magic with like, they were trying to track down that device. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or am I mixing up storylines? No, no, you're no, right. You're right. Because Ryan suddenly is a magical item acquirer who, with connections who can just yeah. find the, the device that they need. It felt like in the, early, the early days, and correct me if I'm seeing it with rose-colored lenses or if I'm making a broad generalization, but it felt like a lot of the the mysteries, at least some, some of the singular standalone episode mysteries, the the solution was often writing a wrong or undoing trauma in some kind of way. Like that was always kind of like one of the key ingredients to solving it. And it felt like the magic was a, a crutch and I'm trying, and I don't want to, I feel like some people would say, but what about Buffy or what about charmed? I didn't watch charm. So I can't speak on that, but and I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll bring that up. I don't, I can't, I just want to, <laughs> at least acknowledge that there are other shows that do they open a spell book and it's like oh how do we reverse this curse or whatever mm -hmm. um but you see there are more though yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'll leave that thought there. i uh one i think you bring up a good point because you know i've made the comparison between nancy and buffy quite a lot i've said this show could have been like a modern day buffy the vampire slayer um 
I think the issue with Nancy was that it had that supernatural-esque tone in the beginning. You were like, could this show venture into the supernatural territory? In the same way that Riverdale did, both shows ultimately ended up doing it. Now, I did not like the way Riverdale the dealt with superpowers, but they explained how it all happened with the rip in the space-time continuum, the Ed, not Edgar Ever, never Percival Pickens, the <laughs> alternate dimension. The alliteration like, in Riverdale really... I know. <laughs> one, bland, and one bland man villain from a not to another. No offense to Chad Michael Murray. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I feel like with Nancy, it kind of just happened subtly because Beth, Beth trained to be a witch for like all of two days and suddenly she had all these powers and then that roped us in. And it's one thing that, like in Buffy, obviously Buffy was the slayer. So that was the explanation for the supernatural. She could slay anything. Yeah, as the show went on, suddenly the vampire slayer could slay demons and all the werewolves and all these other stuff. But I mean, it was It always kind of was about cracking open a book exactly. and knowledge is power. Yeah, exactly. And it made total sense. And so even when Willow brought in the more supernatural esque stuff, it was still on the slayer to solve that problem. Suddenly, Bass is a witch, and Nancy, we have ancient supernatural traditions that weren't mentioned in season one. And it's just like the supernatural door has been opened and we've gone into it. And to your point, Michael, the episode of Buffy we watched, Willow was like, Oh, I can, you know, let me try to do a, a, a spell. And Buffy was like, I'm the slayer. I got it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like we saw that in the episode that we watched. Exactly. And I'm not saying that Nancy's outmatched by magic, because as you see in all the comic book stuff, Batman still has to stop a lot of supernatural and super people. And he does it. I'm not saying that Nancy's outmatched by magic. I'm just saying that the minute we cracked open that door, the door was sucked into the void and the supernatural just started coming out everywhere. And so convenient. It, yeah. Like if if someone watched the first episode of a show and the last episode of the show, obviously there are going to be a lot of different things going on obviously specifically with the flash it's a completely different show by the end and you expect that from a show that runs nine seasons but the first episode of nancy is so different to the final episode of nancy and the funny thing is it doesn't feel like a journey that got there over four seasons like i was sitting watching the series finale thinking oh why are their souls flying out in like red different super special effect colors that's not something we were used to seeing in nancy that vortex scene where they were in the the like the upside down or whatever you want to call it and yes nancy were like that there and their souls are being sucked out None of the show's previous episodes, right up to the penultimate ones, none of them <laughs> prepared you for that sequence. <laughs> Are we having a laugh moment? Can <laughs> <laughs> you, Michael? I will get okay. this up together. <laughs> no worries. None of the show we were watching led up to that. None of it. And the fact that we could watch right up to the penultimate episode and then suddenly you're watching the series finale. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't do it. I can't. <laughs> Just Take keep moment, talking. Right? I, they can just see me laughing off to the side, and it has nothing to do with oh, what yeah. Michael's saying. And Michael's what Michael's saying is on point. It's just the, the body thing <laughs> was funny. Just, you're, you're just like preach, <laughs> preach. Um, um, the fact that we can watch right up to the penultimate episode. And not then not understand the series finale in context says a lot for what would happen if someone watched it out of context. You know That's what I mean? True. Yeah, I think with the magic to to go back to Charmed, that uh, one of the things about the show, the OG, because I, I didn't watch the reboot, y'all, um, or revival, whatever it's supposed to be. Um, the they're novices and they treat them like novices. Like they they have their grimoire that was written by the women in their families. They have their powers, but they make mistakes. They have people who come in who tell them um, different things about how they're supposed to do spells. They have a white lighter who's supposed to guide them. Like they don't, every episode, a lot of the episodes are them encountering something they've never encountered before and having to figure it out. And a lot of the jokes are they don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. we're, we're like doing this and blowing up doors like we're like or we're running around like we thought we got the right spell we didn't get the right spell we got the wrong entire spell and now something else has happened and nancy drew with best she goes from a novice to a master in a very short amount of time her only teacher really is temperance um the there was the historical society um guardian but she wasn't used that well as we moved mm -hmm. on in the show so you're just supposed to believe that over the course of maybe, if I'm being generous, two months, uh, Bess has just read so much about different magic systems in different cultures to the point where she can just run this. And if you're confident using like anything devices and yeah, you know. it's just strange and it just doesn't it doesn't work. I think that is a weak point of the show, not only because we just didn't ground magic the way we need to ground magic. Um, 
But also because when you think about the trajectory of Nancy Drew, each season had a different supernatural aspect. Mm -hmm. First season is about, I mean, it's about a ghost, but specifically about Nancy's mom, her biological mother. And then season two is about the Iglesia, who turns out to be a ghost anyway, but it's about the Iglesia. Um, and, and Odette, you know, and so it's, it's about, and the Hudson mystery. And then we get to season three, we get magic. And then magic takes hold of Nancy Drew and we're in magic still for season four and because of the curse. And it's like, well, we don't actually need to be around with magic. But it's not a witch show, it's a detective show with supernatural elements. Yeah, yeah. no, and that's a good point you bring up, Sabrina. It rem- Nancy in its early days reminded me a lot of Ghost Whisper in that there, it's, a, it's a very serious show with like wink, wink, nudge, nudge to the supernatural because there are ghosts in the background. Ghost Whisperer goes in on the lore a bit more as it goes on and you do find out there's a history of about the ghosts in Grandview, just like there's a history in Torture Bay and all of that. And there's like underground stuff and like secrets and lies and stuff. Yes, but Ghost Whisperer inherently feels like Ghost Whisperer throughout his whole run. It never does anything so ambitious. You're like, where did this come from? I don't know whether it's just the fact that Nancy had to rush those final two seasons or whatever, but the minute they stop acknowledging that ghosts are the only supernatural thing, suddenly everything is supernatural. And don't get me wrong, there there is some amazing supernatural episodes. Remember where that episode where they accidentally summoned that creature and they kept dying and they had to keep going back and doing the writing up on the blackboard and everything they did wrong this time previously, like the Groundhog so Day fun. episode. That was so fun. And the monster only appeared for like all of two seconds and it was terrifying. Love that for them. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with introducing the supernatural in the show. But Ghost Whisperer told that story over five seasons and never bit off more than it's can show. Buffy had seven seasons where it was kind of up and down and it still never felt like it bit off more than it can show. Nancy Drew just went from zero to 100 and even after watching all four seasons, it feels like the transition was overnight. And I don't know where there could have been a moment where it could have been like, okay, we're doing a supernatural season now, but let's just go back to detective mysteries. I would have loved to have seen a case of the week in Nancy's final season because the cases of the week in the first season were so strong. I would have loved to have just seen a case of the week where she used Nancy Drew investigations to solve something. But that poor woman set up her detective organizations that never successfully solved one mystery. And I'm like, missed opportunity there. Why We were having one of those big like, do they call it the working girl moments where you're like finish something and move on to the next stage of your life in the series finale where she walked around her office and looked smiled and all was all proud of herself and like girl you never solved a single mystery why are we why are we having this big moment it's just it never every moment played out as it should have but none of it carried the emotional weight that it should have because we spent far too long stuck in the supernatural realm we spent far too long stuck in the same timeline instead of jumping a few days or years or months whatever it just didn't hit the way it should have, even though on paper all of it was set up to hit, if you know what I mean. It's a shame, really, that it is that it is sort of just the boat was docked. That was it. Like if there isn't um I do wonder if, you know, I'd feel even worse if I had watched from the beginning, like all the way through mm-hmm. nonstop. Uh, because it's not just about where they end up at the end it's about the journey Mm -hmm. and the journey i don't mind if the journey is rough it's writing i don't expect every episode to be an a plus sometimes you gotta fill the requirement and then spark something like i i do get that i don't think we're actually advocating for like for every season to be a bit amazing every episode to be amazing but as far as like closing out their stories season four felt like an interim season Mm -hmm. it felt like we're gonna experiment we're gonna do some things we're gonna have some fun and you may not enjoy it as the viewer but that's what we're going to do and sometimes that can work sometimes it it can't and in first for nancy drew for me it didn't like it's Mm -hmm. especially because it's not really a fun silly goofy time it's like we have fun silly goofy moments but it really is nancy being heartbroken for a good portion of this the season, trying to find uh, her way into another relationship, even though she really shouldn't be finding her way into another relationship, just because that's the way that Nancy Jews as a show is set up, even though they could have dropped that for this season. And then everybody else packing up shop. We're like, that's what they spend the season doing. Like Nick uh, is wandering around town you know, with his coffee mugs, being Mr. Mayor, but not staying around in Hershey Bay. He's clearly going to be leaving. Uh, George is trying to leave. 
if she wants to, she's going to be a lawyer, and then she wants to go to law school, and we do have that. But as Peach Band had mentioned in their comment, even the season ending relationships give you nothing like Nace does because they did they did finish that arc, though, whether or not it's a satisfying one is depending on the person. Uh, some people really enjoyed it. Some didn't. I was one of them. I did not enjoy how we got to Nace. Uh, but also like George ends up with a random man we've known for a few uh, episodes. Nick ends up with a random person we've known for a few episodes. I like Jade. Nothing wrong with Jade, as, but we don't really Peach know Panda them. Said, Peach Panda says George and that man I don't even know the name of. And mm -hmm. they're so right. They're so real. Yeah. So so true. And we struggle with uh, the George and uh, George at Nick storyline. It took me a minute to we struggle with the George at Nick storyline. Why did the show would never have invested so much time into that pairing if they weren't supposed to get together in the end? Um, and now that's just one of the like, true shocking things to me, right? That didn't end up happening. Yeah, exactly. Because it honestly feels kind of like a waste of time now. And I know the people in life, people end up together, and then some people don't, and that's totally fine. But this is television, and the television was writing them as though they were Endgame because they they kept bringing up they were together for fourteen days in season three, and the amount of issues they tackled in those fourteen days was trying to strengthen them in the long game so that anything, any insecurities they had about each other, they were the other partner was there for them. They'd get over it and they knew they'd live a happy life with them. And then when they found out that they didn't need to get married, it rushed them, it rushed the wedding. That was an, a chapter for growth for them so that they could grow together and find their way to marriage eventually. But then we just dropped that and gave, paired them off with new relationships we didn't care about. I think long term they were supposed to get back together. So it bothers me that they brought put them in other relationships. Um, at least on Nick's side, that was quite a nice one. I, I agree, Sabrina. I liked his relationship with Jed. But it bothers me that they put them in other relationships because they walked themselves into a corner there. They couldn't have them get back together in 40 minutes without looking like horrible people to their new partners. They just couldn't do that. So they didn't. I would have ate it up. You know, yeah, you know what I mean? Like It needed to happen. <laughs> it needed to happen. And it didn't, unfortunately. This might be a personal thing, and I, I, I'm sure I'm on record saying this, and I mean it. Um, I'm kind of, I've seen it so many times that I'm kind of over the series finale forcing the characters to leave, as if leaving yeah. is the thing that provides that. There are so many sitcoms where at the end, they move to a different state. They move out of the house, which makes it emotional because they're leaving the set. Like there's so many series finales where the main character is walking out of the empty house and they will take one look back. And I'm just like, maybe it's effective for some people, but for me, having seen this so many times, like the ending being everybody's leaving, it, it, that's the ending is they're no longer together and we're all going to be sad about it. it. It For my personal taste, it doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. No. Because leaving is... I know it happens in real life. People go to college. People move to different states for jobs. Families don't s stay in the same location forever. Friends move to different coasts. Like it's, it's realistic. Um, but I, I also fear that that instills some kind of um, expectation on younger people that you need to leave where you are. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I, also, I like I that grinds my gears too. Is that feeling of like oh you need to leave in order to be a grown-up and it's like only if you want to bestie like don't make tv <laughs> bully you into like feeling like you need to explore the world if that's not something that you need and or want yeah and that was a tangent <laughs> no no you made a good point and it always reminds me of the, the soapy standards when a, when a character leaves the square albert square when a character leaves that they get a beautiful piano version of the theme as a send off with din, 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 din. And then they walk off into the distance with their suitcase or they get into a black cab and leave. Um, it's it's become such a thing now, but it has become a TikTok trend. And you see someone in a hotel room and there's me leaving my hotel like I'm leaving these standards. And they look around and leave with the din, 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 din music. The thing it's about the Hannah Montana when Miley leaves yeah, the house. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> End of an era. The thing that bothers me is that they give all four of the Drew Crew an East Enders slash Hannah Montana ending. And I'm like, Horseshoe Bay is as much of a character in Nancy Drew as like Albert Square was in East Enders. Why do 
all four of the characters have to venture five. up and venture up. Five. five, five. I'm sorry. Unless you're then, counting one as a unit. <laughs> <laughs> why do all five? Well, yeah, you know, one of the two of them did leave together. Um, why do all five of the Drew crew? I got confused. My my core four of Riverdale. Why do all five of the Drew crew have to leave together? Why why does Horseshoe Bay have to say goodbye to these characters? I mean, that I do such don't a blame thing? them. Horseshoe Bay um, kind of sucks. Oh yeah, I would have left long yeah. ago. But I mean, like it's convenient that we all. But I mean, like if the time. mysteries and the supernatural, if you slay all those demons and you just want to kick it in your hometown, I get that too. Yeah, yeah. But like it also seemed like they were building them to inherit the town. Because what is the mm-hmm. point of Nick being on the county council? What is the point of Bess being his, the leader of the historical society? What is the point of George owning um, the claw and trying to uh, do law in town? What is Nancy o- the point of Nancy opening the investigation agency? What is the point of Ace becoming, being in the morgue, like getting a job in the morgue, if we're not establishing places in which that, that will be of influence in town because they are going to inherit protecting it. I thought that's where we were going in the uh, the finale, to be honest, not like as the show, but like in general, um, the direction season four was taking was that that is what they were going to set up, that they each have an important influence in the town based on their own personalities expertise. and interests and expertise and they were just like no best is staying to one historical society and everybody else is leaving mm-hmm. and it really does bother me like that because i know Bess is the most powerful of them but the show didn't want to tell that story because obviously it's called nancy drew so we like limited what Bess could do for most of the time and honestly she was so powerful she could probably just click her fingers and save the day but we couldn't do that because it's television but that's what bothers me we see sh- shows like the flash have a very like happy go lucky tone and that we're superheroes and we're going to save the day whereas a show like arrow was very depressing for a lot of its run and there was a lot of serious crimes involved and this is a vigilante who had to protect the city nancy drew kind of had that tone in that horseshoe bay is not a safe place to live we have set up these heroes who are going to save the day and now they're all going to leave and leave the town virtually unprotected. And that's supposed to be a happy ending. Like I said, I know Bess is still there. I know she was, she is the most powerful of them all. But I just feel like we went for the basic ending and didn't think it all through because the basic ending does not work when it's tacked on to the end of this particular season. You know, now that I think about it, though, it's also a sad ending for Bess because she enters in wanting family. She finds her found family. Her found family leaves. People always leave. Peyton Sawyer said it. <laughs> 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 it just wow the more we dissect the more i am unhappy about where we ended up with nancy drew and i already was unhappy like i already was not feeling where where we ended with the show it is one of those things where it feels like we burned so bright and then we just petered out mm-hmm. and that is not to say that there isn't some gorgeous writing in nancy drew in its latter seasons it's weird to say latter because it's only like season three and season four would qualify as the latter like that's it but the um but there are there's gorgeous storytelling there's fun storytelling like the writers were the writers were writing a lot of the the time it's just as far as connecting threads and the overall story it's not as satisfying as you would have thought having completed season one and being excited for what was to come next Mm -hmm. Look, if you love season four, you love the ending. I love that for you. Love it. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I'm unfortunately, I'm not one of those people. (laughs) 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 Um, Hey, look, out of, I, I said the same thing about the Flash series finale out of context. It's a fine episode and it's a fine ending to, a adequate, less than adequate season. And it functions, it's serviceable and it does its job. But the only reason I think it hit so hard for us was because it doesn't service the whole show. Um, we love the show so much. I, I, I've i said this before on the pod, I adore our Nazi journey. I think since we've started the podcast, it's been this fa- my favorite thing we've done. I never think of the show without thinking of you guys. And I wanted a better ending for these characters that we've fallen in love with because this was my favorite show i was watching for the first two and a half seasons um and i just feel it fell off very quickly and i just i wanted better for it so i know we spent this last 40 minutes complaining about what the finale got wrong but that's only because it's such a good show it's such an amazing show and i think i just wanted a better ending for the people we love so much yeah yeah for sure it's the it's the grievances pod that's what this yeah. is nancy grievances hanging up 
for 2023, leaving it on the shelf. I feel like we've we've purged through everything yeah, that mm -hmm. we felt about the show and how to go forward into yeah. 2024 with a new journey that's not been decided yet. I'm not teasing anything. Oh, we just don't know what the new journey <laughs> is. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. Wild cards. Yes, oh. it is. There you oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My new favorite show I haven't seen a minute of. <laughs> yes. I, well, thank y'all for being here with us. I don't know if this would be qualified as a, a, a green couch moment, a green table talk, but it's been brought to you by Peach Panda. Let me get these numbers right. Peach Panda 9693. Thank you for your wonderful comment. It it spoke to our souls, and that's why we did this pod episode. It gave me so many laughs, too, Peach Panda. You're so funny. Yep. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> thank you for inspiring this episode. <laughs> yes, and thank you all for listening. We're the CW Spiral. I'm Sabrina. I'm Michael. I'm Reed. Hi. <laughs>